and just give you a quick report on a, on a, a notice that we recently received just a you know, day or so ago relative to power outages that could occur due to fuel shortages at major electric facilities through the Northeast and the weather is apparently a factor in this. And I want to assure the City Council and the community that we have an emergency management director who is Chief Burke as well as an emergency management plan and we know how to deal with this should it occur during these cold weather events. Chief Burr. So City Manager McLean just stole the show. <laughs> <laughs> but with that said, all seriousness, uh, as of yesterday, late yesterday morning, we were informed by uh, Eversource, the city's uh, supplier of electricity, probably 95% of the electricity is supplied to the city is through Eversource. And the representative from Eversource, uh, who I talked to this morning, uh, briefed us on an ever-involving situation with with our grid, su our uh, supplier of energy from uh, New England, or ISO New England, excuse me. And uh, sorry about that. But there, there may be a situation in the near future, depending on. Uh, Deep freezes, long, long-standing uh, sub-zero temperatures, and the lack of, of uh, energy to supply the uh, the power plants, mainly natural gas. So, I think, as we all know, power companies are are more uh, are being scrutinized more in the last several years with storms and hurricanes and tornadoes. So, um, to their to their credit, uh, ISO New England is informing. Uh, the power supply companies in six New England states, including New Hampshire, that there's a possibility that there may be a series of steps taking place or taking place in order to not stress the grid, the power grid that New Hampshire is part of. And those steps are, are going to be uh, asking for local conservation, uh, reaching out to major commercial companies and uh, industries to help see if they can help so reduce the power. Uh, that uh, they'll use. Um, voltage reduction is another uh, attempt if, if the conservation doesn't work. And then finally, rolling blackouts. So, you know, it, it's going to take a combination of sub zero temperatures again and the lack of energy to supply the power plants. Um, power plants use a, a, a number of different sources, mainly, like I said before, natural gas, which is about 51%. So what you have in front of you is a snapshot of what happened today on the power grid in ISO New England. And it just gives you a, an idea of what the stresses are on predicted predicted day and what they were uh, you know yesterday. Um, the grid or the, the grid also shows you that uh, again 51% of natural gas is the major supply of uh, fuel for those plants. Uh, nuclear 25%, 11% is renewables, and you look to the to the right of the the right the left grid, and those factors in there are all the renewables that they we talk about. And 11% wind, uh, uh, refuse, wood, solar, and landfill gas, and the rest is self-explanatory. So, with that said, uh, we looked at our emergency action plan. All of the city directors that. Uh, are involved in this. Uh, our uh, water treatment plant, our sewer plants are all prepared for this. In the event that we do see rolling blackouts, they can sustain three to four days without uh, outside power. Um, the, fire, uh, the police chief is, in, is the uh, code red, which can inform the public of the situation and know that Eversource is doing everything they can as this leads up to a, a possible rollout, blackout rollout that they will inform the public ahead of time. And I think that's the key message here, that we will all be, as, as the government, city government, and citizens will be informed ahead of time of what the actions that the grid will take that will affect Eversource and eventually us. I can take questions. I mean, there's not a lot of information that's ever evolving. And uh, even as of late this, this evening, I was in conversation with a representative from Eversource. Questions, concern? Anybody? We have a gentleman behind you that has a question. Chief. Good evening, everybody. My name is 
Former Representative Francis Scott here, and I'm here to, to this evening, uh, Ward Three. Thank you. Ward One. I mean. <laughs> okay. um, that I'm here to uh, to uh, be installed in, in the Energy Committee, and uh, this is a perfect segue into what I've been saying for quite a while, what I've been posting about. Is that is that we need community power? This is a perfect example. Number one, we have generators down on the down on the uh, river. We have solar farms that's going to be going in, and and there's other investments that if we had community power that more people would step up to the plate. Because why? You have a re you have a reduction of power from the grid. It's unreliable. And that means we need to fill this in with uh, especially peak times when you shave off those peak times we can all get a better cost on power because community power is going to buy at 15 percent of mr. the energy mr gothier did you have a question of chief Burr? i thought you had a question otherwise i I'd prefer this I'm to be under I was, citizens i was form. saying that the question is is why not community power and community power has been has been uh put off and there really hasn't been much work done so why is that and this is the perfect example right here thank you very much thank you just one point of comment um, regarding our emergency action plan it is on the fire department website and it's there for the public to view there's a single page there that gives the breakdown for um, this particular type of situation so again all city directors have been informed and we're prepared to uh, take appropriate action if and when the situation happens so thank you for your time thank you for the briefing chief mr. McLean did you have anything else sir no sir and I do want to thank uh, mr. Gothier for his comments thank you very much Three committee councillor Koloski I wanted to make a motion to disband this committee and I can speak to that if there is a second. Yes, second for discussion. Okay, so the motion to disband the Claremont Energy Advisory Committee is made by Councillor Koloski, seconded by Councillor O'Hearn. So, discussion on the Energy Advisory Committee. Councillor Contois. So, these, uh, you know, talked about kicking the can down the road and not making decisions this council doesn't have the time to look into the complex issues that both the energy advisory committee would do and the electric aggregation we've been sitting on electric aggregation for some time and we have some capable people who are going to give us some advice and, and I don't I don't see it I see it as a win-win to keep it and I don't see any advantage to disbanding it at all for both committees, aggregation as well as the Energy Advisory Committee. They've also done some good work, and I'd like to see them continue. Thank you. Councillor Klosky. <clears throat> so looking at their functions and what the meetings are to be, and I have watched the meetings, and I, if you look at what they're tasked with, um, I, I don't feel it's working um, these are we'll go back to the electric ag aggregation aggregation like we have the ability at any point as we've been told to join on our own that doesn't need to be a recommendation from that board that's a decision we can make and you can do that at any time what has been discussed and what is ongoing has been long and drawn out and I believe we have the ability with our information that we already have and even is coming to us to make a decision and not kick a can down the road if you look at some of the other the educational portions of this this is the way that this is worded you could have a committee making decisions and setting up an information booth at a farmers market and putting forward information that has not come back 
to the elected body yet. And as this reads, number three, uh, there are other tasks or other initiatives and assignments as may be determined by the city council from time to time. It's just vague. And we have the ability to streamline things and make decisions. And I would like to see us do that. Thank you. Anybody else? Councilor O'Hearn? Just a question, I guess. I'm really looking at the uh, makeup and we only have one applicant for but all the other seats have expired. We actually have three applicants and we actually have two additional that aren't being reappointed. So there's three re reappointments, Councilor, and then there's two other applicants. So. so I'd make a motion to just table this to the next meeting for further discussion. Second. Okay, so a motion to table at this point and seconded by Councilor Stone table to the next meeting for further discussion on the yes. January 26 and seconded by Councilor Stone yes yes thank you your honor so in tabling is there anything that we can do staff wise to help you with that discussion I just think that first of all it's not debatable but I did not think it needs more discussion that we're not going to get into tonight okay. um, can I just ask a question we already had a motion to disband tabling motion Does is a high priority that's what I want to know. Thank you. Once it's been tabled, Mr. Gothier, we can't discuss it anymore at this time. Or the motion's been made to table. Okay. Table the Energy Advi Advisory Committee for the next meeting. Councilor Contois? No. Councilor Hearn? Yes. Councilor Stone? Yes. Assistant Mayor Mattow? Yes. Councilor Klosky? No. Council Limoge? Yes. Council Bellevue? Yes. Council Mushian? No. Mayor Gerard? No. Five four passes. So it's tabled. Okay. Mr. Gothier? <clears throat> former Representative Francis Gothier, Ward One. Um, I noticed that when Chief Burr started mentioning about rolling blackouts and power going out at sub-zero weather, that the council doesn't really seem alarmed over that, okay? And I agree with, with uh, Councilor Klosky. We ought to get rid of those two committees because they haven't done anything, really, in the last year of consequence other than trying to bring charging stations to Claremont. That's not the, when, when, you, when you're having a problem with capacity, the last thing you want is charging stations. Okay, that's number one. Number two, they're not gonna be used. So I would say, and I would recommend, to either put people on those committees that are actually want to get something done, and how come they haven't you know, this community power hasn't gone forward. When you have 15 other communities in the entire county of Cheshire are going with that, that's 15% of the, of, the, of, the, of the power that's consumed in New Hampshire. Community power, they're not going to be dealing with the PUC after they get formed. And they won't be dealing with Eversource for any negotiations. They'll be buying on the wholesale market right through the, through the ISO power pool the New England power pool, right? And number two is when I was the state house, I put, I, I put up a lot of, of discussion and to say, why aren't we getting more hydro Quebec here, right? We had Northern Pass that was killed in New Hampshire and the same type of thing Northern Pass in Maine was killed. And, and if it's gonna go between if it's going to be going between uh, Hydro Quebec and Connecticut or Massachusetts, why aren't New Hampshire getting some power out of this? What, why are we? Why is it just passing through at a free pass? Why isn't the state house and why isn't the uh, uh, communities demanding that we negotiate with Hydro Quebec? Now, community power—they're going to be 
they might be able to do that because they're going right to the source of the power. They're going to buy it from the source. Like I said before, you have all those generators down here on the, on the Sugar River. You've got these solar farms, which they want to put solar farms and send all the power to down to uh, Massachusetts. No, that should stay here, right? And and it's and it's time to stop kicking the can down the road. A crisis is coming, and this council must act. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Gothier. Thank you. Anybody else for Citizens Forum? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I. My name is Can you come up to the? Robert Smith. 